Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. This video is a part of a series of video about the foundation of DAX. I already recorded a video about the raw context and a video about the filter context. If you are not yet familiar with those concepts, go back and look at those videos first. Because in this video, we are going to introduce probably the most important function in DAX, that is calculate. Calculate is the most relevant and powerful function in DAX because it's the only function in the entire language that is able to change the filter context. Therefore, you will use Calculate a lot. And uh, as we always do in this foundation series of video, we are going to introduce the basics of Calculate the right way so that you have a solid theoretical foundation about what Calculate is and how it works. With all that said, let's start looking at Calculate with some examples. Let's start by looking at this report. This is our usual contours model, and I have a matrix that is slicing by brand and computing the sales amount. It's worth remembering that in this cell, for example, we are computing the sales amount for Contoso. And the reason we are computing it for Contoso is because there is a filter context created by the visual that slices by Contoso. Therefore, 2.2 millions is the value of the sales amount for only Contoso because of the filter context. Calculate lets you change the filter context. So, what if instead of computing the sales amount, we want to restrict the calculation and compute the sales amount for only the red products? We know we could do that with the visual by slicing or by filtering only red sales, but we can also use Calculate. So let's create a measure that computes the sales amount for only the red products, and we call it red sales. So we start by building a new measure with a much larger font, and let's call it red sales. Red sales is going to use calculate. Calculate accepts as the first argument the expression that we want to compute, and we want to compute the sales amount, a measure that computes the sales amount in the current filter context. But then we change the filter context, adding a condition that says I want the product color to be red. This new filter is being added to the filter context, so that when I compute it in the filter context that already contains Contoso, the new filter context will be Contoso and red. Let me just format the measure as a decimal number, and then if I place the measure moving this a bit lower so we can see everything, you see that the numbers are different. The value computed here for Contoso is much smaller because uh, this is the sales amount for all the products and this is the sales amount of all the red products. As you have seen, using Calculate you apply filters, you add the filters as conditions and those conditions are used to modify the existing filter context. Before saying anything further, it's important to uh, clarify what is a condition, what is the filter that is used by Calculate. Because even though we use a Boolean condition like product color equals red, Calculate filters are indeed tables. Let me show you that. What we wrote here is red says by applying a condition on the product color. And we have the feeling that this is a condition. Actually, it is not. Writing product color equal red is nothing but syntax sugar for a more complex expression that is actually used by Calculate. And the more complex expression returns a table. It is filter all product color where product color equals red. Now this filtering condition, filter all product where color equal red, returns a table containing the values of the product color that happen to be red. So it will be only one value. Nonetheless, it is a table, and calculate filters are tables. Indeed, if I just hit enter, nothing is going to change in any of the number, because one way of writing the calculate expression is the very same as the other way. Sometimes we use tables, sometimes we prefer to use conditions, just because conditions are easier to express. And showing the condition, showing the, the condition as a table is also helpful in order to understand 
how Calculic modifies the filter context. Indeed, you see that when you author the code with a table, it shows all product color. Therefore, this filter condition will ignore any filter from the outer filter context and replace it with the product color equals red. Therefore, Calculate overrides the outer filter context only for the column that it is touching. And this is a bit easier to see if instead of slicing by brand, I still show red sales, but I slice by product color. If I slice by product color on the rows, you see that I see the value of red sales everywhere. Here we had previously a filter context containing blue, which is overridden by the new filter context containing red. And this overwrite process happens for all the columns that are used in the calculate function. Indeed, you can use calculate to apply multiple filters. What if I want to show the sales amount of red products for only customers who live in the United States? Well, what I can do is uh, create a new measure. Let me copy the code of red sales uh, so we don't have to rewrite it. And we create a new measure that we call uh, red sales in USA. I just copy everything. Let's go for the shorter syntax. We already know this is the same and we can apply a further condition. So we say product color equal red and customer country equal United States. Let's format it as a decimal number again. And now this calculate expression, this calculate function is using two different conditions, one on the color, one on the country. And the two are used together to modify the filter context. If I add red sales in the US, you see that the number is smaller. And instead of slicing by color, probably the numbers are more interesting if we slice it by brand. You see that I have Adventure Works. This is the total sales amount, the red sales, and the red sales only for the United States. You can add as many conditions as you want in Calculate, and they are all applied independently from each other. So the conditions are not evaluated in order, they are evaluated separately and then applied to the filter context, overwriting the filter context that was previously existing, the filter context created by the visual or by other calculate function that happened to be before you. One important detail is that uh, calculate overrides the outer filter context. What if I don't want to override the filter context? Well, you have the option of doing that. Let me show you that by slicing again by color. So let me remove the brand and we slice again by color. And I also remove red sales in the US. You see that the number shown here is always the same number because the outer filter context is being replaced by the new filter context on the product color. If you want to change this behavior, you have the option of using the keep filter modifier. Let me again copy the code of red sales and we now author a new version of the measure that will obey the outer filter context. Let's call it red sales keep filters. We go again to the short syntax. If I write it this way, we already know the outcome will be the same number everywhere. But what I can do is use keep filters. Keep filters tells Calculate not to remove the outer filter, but to keep the outer filter on the product color and add the new filter as a further filter. So if I use this version of the code, which I always need to format as a decimal number, and I place it on the matrix, you now see that red says keep filters shows a blank everywhere except on the red. How is it working internally? It's important to always follow the theory and understand whether the theory is actually uh, consistent with uh, the numbers we see. When the, when the number is computed here, we have an outer filter context that says the product color needs to be black. We add a new filter for product color equals red and we keep the outer filter. So there will be two different filters, one for black, one for red, and the intersection is empty. Therefore, it doesn't show anything. Whereas uh, the only number that is shown is here because we do have a 
previous filter context that says red, the new filter context says red again, the two have a match, therefore you see the number. Sometimes you need to use keep filter, sometimes you do not. That depends on the number you want to compute, that depends on the, uh, the calculation that you want to perform. Sometimes you want to override out a filter, sometimes you want to keep them. And you always need to use keep filters, because, uh, or to use keep filters if you want to obtain this goal. Because one of the most common mistakes that people do is just try with calculate different versions of the code until they find the version that actually works, even though it is not the right way of expressing the code. Let me show you that with another example. Because you can write red says keep filters this way, or you can write a different version of the measure. We call it red sales table filter where instead of placing the condition like product color equals red, you write the condition say filter product, where product color equals red. Now, this version of the code works just fine, and we know it will work because filter product where color equals red actually returns a table, and tables are absolutely fine as calculate filters. If I format again this as a decimal and I place it in my report, you see that the outcome is the very same as uh, the previous one. So the two calculations, they actually compute the same value. The thing is, the version with key filters is optimized and written the right way. The version that is filtering product is not written the right way. It is applying the filter on an entire table. The product table is not that large, but it contains several columns. Therefore, you, DAX will need to materialize this table and the, the version, the, this code is actually slower. Moreover, uh, when you go farther in learning DAX and you learn about expanded tables, uh, this version of the code that places a filter on the entire product table might place a filter on the expanded table that happens to be much larger than the original table. So one of the few golden rules of DAX is never filter a table, always filter columns and only columns. The smallest number of columns that is needed in order to achieve your goal. As you have seen, calculate is not a complex function. Complexity in calculator comes from the fact that calculate changes the filter context. That's why you need to be to know very well, uh, to be proficient with writing DAX and understanding the row context and the filter context. These are the basics. Only then you can start learning Calculate and start to modify the filter context. Actually, this video was just an introduction to Calculate. Calculate performs other operations. It performs the context transition and it follows a very clear algorithm in applying the filters. So when you start adding more filters and you write complex calculate expressions, things can be harder than the simple examples we have seen so far. Nonetheless, learning DAX is a slow process. You need to start digesting the first basic concepts, learn them, apply them, understand them really, really well, and only later you can start writing more complex code. If you are interested in learning DAX from the beginning, remember we do have a lot of articles, videos and trainings at SQL BI that you can follow in order to start learning DAX the right way. Enjoy DAX! <laughs>